Xi'an, the capital city for many Chinese dynasties, was the starting point of the ancient Silk Road. Now, under the Belt and Road Initiative, the historical city is bursting with new vitality. The Kazakh proverb was confirmed in the story of Anita Yumakunova. 17 years ago, the 19-year-old Anita came from Kazakhstan to study in Xi'an, China, where she met the love of her life. Located in the heart of Eurasia, Kazakhstan was an important stop on the ancient Silk Road. Now, the Silk Road economic belt has added new impetus to the country's economic development. This is Karaganda, Anita's hometown. It's located in the north of Kazakhstan, thousands of kilometers from Xi'an. No matter how busy she is, Anita returns to her hometown once a year. Мама когда съездила в Китай, научилась готовить китайский соус йопалацзе. Это острый соус, который можно добавлять к блюдам. И теперь у меня муж, когда приезжает, у мамы специальная баночка соуса для мужа стоит. Chili sauce, toasters, these daily essentials connect the hearts of Chinese and Kazakh people. The demand and love for Chinese goods from her hometown led Anita to discover business opportunities. Сначала я поехала учиться в Китай в самом начале, и когда возвращалась домой, ну меня друзья просили там захватить то, то захвати это там что-то вещи какие-то маленькие товар товар народного потребления так скажем. И постепенно количество запросов увеличивалось, я просто физически не могла это все увести. Мы с подружкой открыли, не с подружкой, с сестренкой, открыли сайт. However, slow logistics became a bottleneck that constrained the shop's development. То есть мои клиенты покупали летом юбку девочки, и только зимой они ее там получали через несколько месяцев. Things began to change in July 2016, when Anita's goods could be transported by China-Europe freight trains. The freight train service, like modern-day steel camel caravans, offers a reliable channel for trade and economic cooperation. After around 10 years, the trains are now linking 108 Chinese cities with over 200 European cities in 25 countries.
Всем привет, меня зовут. Итак, первый наш товар. I need to organize such training sessions for online live streamers regularly for free, helping more people seek opportunities from the Belt and Road Initiative. In 2019, Anita and her husband founded the e-commerce platform Silk Road City Shop, targeting Russian-speaking countries. Nowadays, online shopping is gaining popularity in Kazakhstan, and the couple's Silk Road City Shop is becoming known in the region. Anita's family is just one of many who have benefited from the China Europe freight train services. So, we are as continuers of the modern shock of the the representatives who are on the way now in the modern countries. We are doing business and cultural exchange. Now, the new Silk Road reaches far and wide. The farther it extends, the closer people along it get to each other and to new opportunities. Laos, the only landlocked country in Southeast Asia, has been longing for ways to reach out to the world. Twenty-three-year-old Sida Feng Feng Sua is a train maintenance worker at the Laos China Railway Company. She's been dreaming of becoming a train driver. The job on the China Laos Railway has brought her one big step closer to her dream. Thirty-two-year-old Yang Shi Pao Fong is a PhD student in China's Yunnan, a province bordering Laos. For him, pursuing studies and a career in China has been a dream come true. On his social media account, Bieng Tsai often shares interesting stories about the China Laos Railway. Sida is one of his followers. Though they live hundreds of kilometers apart, the railway allowed them to become known to one another. In Laos, mountains and plateaus cover 80% of the land. Sida's hometown Mungshai is located in a river basin surrounded by mountains. The China Laos Railway connecting Kuming in Yunnan province with the Lao capital of Vientiane, started operation in December 2021. The 1,035 km railway, a landmark project of the Belt and Road Cooperation, has brought great changes to the lives of people living along the route. <laughs> The railway is helping Lao people realize their long cherished aspirations. However, the construction process was full of challenges as the rail line passes through areas with complicated geological conditions. During the construction, the Laos China Railway Company also set up training camps, teaching around 600 Laos students about train driving, dispatching, and maintenance. Sida was one of the trainees. 
After completing the training sessions, Sida became a train maintenance worker on the China Laos Railway. The China Laos Railway has greatly shortened cargo transport time between China and Laos. Chinese delicacies can now often be seen on the tables of Lao families. Delicious food, reminiscent of families and hometowns, brings people and their dreams closer. After a busy day, Sida has completed her work. She then turns on the online live stream of Being Say, who's on the Chinese side of the China Laos Railway. <laughs> This is a railway that is turning a landmark country to a land-linked hub, facilitating trade and tourism, and ultimately bringing dreams to fruition. In East Africa, Kenya is known as a land of wonder. From its vast grasslands to epic landforms, people in this country have always believed in miracles. This is a children's home in Narok County of Kenya. The kids drove football suddenly took a turn for the worse. No matter how hard they tried, no one was able to fix the problem. Our TV is not working, and we are kindly calling you to come and fix for us, please. The CEP Children's Home was founded in 1979. It provides shelter to orphaned and abandoned children. Now, 45 children are living here. While waiting for the repairman, the kids started playing football. I can't explain how I feel playing football. Uh, I love football and football is in my blood. When he arrived, Sadala was too shy to talk with the other kids. He often chose to stay alone. One day, workers came to the children's home to install a TV, giving Sadala a pleasant surprise. It was built on the, the 6th January 2018, and the children were very excited, and also I was very happy. Yeah, I was very happy. Michael the repairman arrived. He connected the wires that were blown down by a gust of wind and got the TV working again. Children have also been able to acquire some skills. Some are now good dancers, they speak good English, they use the channels to learn, and also watching of football. My favorite show is to dance. And I like dance this and this, for example, for example, like this. <laughs> my favorite show is comedy, and I like, to, uh, in my future, I like to be a comedian, to make people laughing. When I watch the TV, 
it encourages you to have a very big dream, vision, uh, becoming a nice footballer in the world. So it has nurtured me. The TV has changed my life. Due to his excellent soccer skills, Sadala became the captain of the orphanage's football team. In a football match organized by the Kenyan Ministry of Education, Sadala represented his school. For children here, the fluorescent screen is a window to the dreams and miracles of the outside world, inspiring them to seek their own. I like to become a, a nice footballer in the world. Because children, they have what is in them. These are the talents. Uh, the challenge of the certain thing has been able to expose these children to know what is happening even beyond our country. The CPay Children's Homes TV story is one of many about a China launch project called access to satellite TV for 10,000 African villages. The project is part of a cooperation plan between China and Africa under the Belt and Road Initiative. Since 2017, China has been working with 23 African countries to carry forward the project, helping locals access the outside world and opening up new horizons for rural communities. In West Africa, Ghana has been traditionally known for its natural resources, ranging from gold to timber. However, forest coverage has been shrinking, and many loggers are seeking alternative ways to make a living. For George Sopong, the future lies in bamboo. The 31-year-old Ghanaian is trying to turn the plant deemed valueless by many locals into wealth. Sarpank has been a bamboo artisan for 23 years. He runs a bamboo workshop and recruits young people, many of whom used to be lumberjacks. Oh, that's great. Bamboo is regarded as a good substitute for timber in many industries. Bamboo is hollow, and anybody who uses bamboo is. Uh, a very wise person because it is not easy. That is why uh, I normally call it the wise man's timber. Sopong is a single father with a daughter, Margaret. He shows his love for her with bamboo. Margaret remembers that when she was a child, her father would always turn bamboo poles into various products like desks, chairs, toy cars, and model planes. What she didn't know was that by selling self-made bamboo products, her father could put food on the table and send her to school. Bamboo has really changed uh, me and my daughter because um, I hadn't been bamboo, I don't think uh, I would have been where I am today. Sarpong entered the world of bamboo art by chance and found it fascinating. He quit his job and devoted himself to designing bamboo products. Though Sopong has created more than 50 kinds of products, his mother, however, didn't quite understand his obsession. So whilst my mother was yelling at me, one day she called me, my son, why wouldn't you change what you're doing as it is not moving as I expected? I told my mom I can change the world with bamboo. In 2016, the International Network for Bamboo and Rattan, established under the framework of the Belt and Road Initiative, invited Ghanaian craftsmen to China for studies. Sopong was one of them. This trip changed Sopong greatly. And the way they, 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 they showed us how to uh, join the joints 
and um, uh, the cutting before I never knew there are some techniques of that nature. So this made me love bamboo more. It was amazing. Here, to his surprise, Sobong found that bamboo is used to create more than 10,000 kinds of products. At the closing ceremony, I wept. Because uh, uh, what I learned from them, I decided to come and impact the knowledge. With the support of the International Network for Bamboo and Rattan, Sopong founded a workshop training more than 200 people for free. Here, they apply Chinese mortise and tenon techniques to make their bamboo products more durable. Sopong's income has increased fivefold, and more people are using bamboo as a new source of income because of him. Master Mbeshia, Master George, or ye or Tin in Echer make money on the house, and cost that is a million. Bargain Puno Maya, cigar, make to Aminano, and near Mamma Bravo as a son, and near Mamma Drup and Pensobia, and many names a mid Madru one. The Belt and Road Initiative has helped Sarpong realize his dream of expanding his bamboo business. Now, his new dream is to see the bamboo forests and industry growing quickly in his country creating a green and sustainable future for the next generation. Through all procedures, bamboo will go far beyond its value. Just like humans, no pains, no gains. You should always believe you have a world of possibilities. Sopang's daughter is also joining the business, planning to inherit and pass on the bamboo culture in this world of possibilities. Qatar is known as the Pearl in the Persian Gulf. In the winter of 2022, a Football World Cup held here ignited passion across the world. This is the main stadium of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. The Loose Sales Stadium is the world's largest membrane structure building, which can accommodate 90,000 people. Its construction required enough steel to build three Eiffel Towers. As a project under the Belt and Road Initiative, the stadium was contracted by a Chinese company. More than 110 subcontractors from 20 countries participated in its construction. Leonidas Zivalekas a Greek national, works for a company involved in the construction of the Lucille Stadium. As a building information modeling manager, the 40-year-old needed to work out solutions for the mega project using BIM technology. The delicate curtain wall is a highlight of the golden bowl-shaped stadium, but installing it was anything but easy for Sevalakis's team. The wall is made of triangular aluminium plates carved with more than 4,200 simulated enamel lantern patterns. The plates were made using 3D laser scanning technology and BIM solutions. The facade principal support and structure is provided by alternate series of A and G shaped structures that span beyond 60 meters, are curved and lean towards the facade bowl shaped structure. The essence of BIM technology is to build a virtual construction model and use it to guide construction and operations. These kind of projects are having more than 100 subcontractors with maybe more than 30 disciplines.
While building the project, the international architectural team also built a bridge of friendship. We have been developing bonds and interpersonal relations. A representative example, amongst many, is a gift that my friend Mustafa offered me. This is actually a box, chocolate box from Belgium on one of the trips that he underwent, having engraved my name on it. The one that I cherish the most is I have a Chinese colleague who teaches me how to write Chinese calligraphy. And I felt so magical and amazed. Uh, we enjoy every part of the project that we construct. Thanks to close cooperation of constructors from various countries, the project was completed on time, with many records broken. The Lucille Stadium was also featured on Qatari Real banknotes, introduced in 2020 and became a new landmark. Lucille is the one that will host the final. Uh, it's our biggest stadium and I think for anybody that visits it, especially from China, they can come and appreciate uh, Chinese engineering. Uh, since this uh, long-lasting project uh, required too much effort from ourselves, the teams, from everyone to make this happen, so definitely we have uh, the feeling of fulfillment and accomplishment. Outside the stadium was a one kilometer long wall displaying photos of the smiling faces of the more than 7,000 people who participated in the construction. Aria, are you there? Yes. Yes. Do you want to see my face on the wall? We have a beautiful wall here. Yes. I am Sigati, a civil engineer from the Philippines. My name is Mohammed Saif Ijaz and I am a civil engineer from Pakistan. أنا حسام القريوتي مهندس مدني من الأردن. وجاه هون هاري شيء تونغ غو تيجي أنا شام فو تيني. ولاية تونغ غو. مرا نام سامو. مي كولتي كنترول غو. مي إنديا سي غو. أنا مازو مي ليونيداس جافيلكاس. إيمو بيم مانجر تو إيرغو كي برو إيرغو مي بوكي لادا. As an architectural wonder built under the Belt and Road Initiative, the Lucille Stadium manifests the power of cooperation, transcending race culture and language to create a better future for everyone. Sri Lanka, a gem in the Indian Ocean, the vast expanse of the sea has always been a blessing for locals. However, it also limits the island country's potential for development. Sanjiwa Fernando couldn't answer his son's question, but maybe he could give him an answer the second day. For Fernando and his interviewer, they didn't yet know that they happened to share the same first name. Mama. 
Fernando hoped that he could be lucky enough to secure a job with a stable income for his family. He went to Colombo, 130 kilometers from his home, for the interview. There were more job opportunities there than in his hometown. Too much traffic. Sanjiwa Alves has already got used to the hustle and bustle of Colombo, where the construction of the mega project Port City Colombo is underway. As Sri Lanka's first special economic zone for high end services, the port city is being built on 269 hectares of land reclaimed from the ocean and annexed to the city of Colombo. The project is seen as an example of cooperation between Sri Lanka and China under the Belt and Road Initiative. <laughs> Fernando was the first one to be interviewed. Thirteen years ago, Alwes also faced a life-changing opportunity while working in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. The electrical engineer had lived overseas for many years, but always aspired to fulfill his potential in his hometown one day. There was a report uh, that Sri Lankan government going to build international financial center in Colombo in collaboration with Chinese enterprises. So that news is very uh, surprised me. If the international financial center built in Sri Lanka, there will be more opportunities for Sri Lankans. In 2016, Awas and his family moved back to Sri Lanka. Soon afterwards, as he had wished, he joined the Port City Colombo project. In January 2019, the project marked a milestone when the total land reclamation of 269 hectares was completed. Alwes and his colleagues were overjoyed. I'm proud that Port City is the unprecedented project in Sri Lanka's history. Whatever we are doing is a sample of Sri Lanka's future. In the first test, Fernando didn't perform as well as he had wished. However, he's good at painting, so he wanted to impress the examiner, Alwes, in this test. <laughs> During the practical test, we found out he has the painting experience than the electrical experience. So, we may give him a chance to work in Port City project uh, after considering the other candidates' experience also. While anxiously awaiting the outcome of his interview, Fernando's expectations for the Port City Colombo project grew. ගිහිල්ලා <laughs> The city on the sea 
bears the aspirations of many Sri Lankans to develop their homeland and realize their dreams. It's also an embodiment of the new practice of sustainable urban development under the Belt and Road Initiative. It suddenly occurred to Fernando that the sea is no longer a constraint for the imagination of the younger generation. I want to be a scientist. I want to be a pilot. I like to be an architect. In Kazakhstan, Anita and her husband are expanding their business, exporting more products to China. In Laos, from Viangshe's videos, more people are learning of Sida and her railway dream. In Kenya, Sadala is becoming a star among his classmates for his remarkable football skills. In Ghana, Sarpong has been elected president of the National Bamboo and Rattan Association and continues to promote bamboo art and culture. In Qatar, the golden bowl-shaped sports arena witnessed the passion and grandeur of the World Cup football extravaganza. In Sri Lanka, young Fernando told his father that in the future he wants to pilot a yacht and navigate the seas in a manner entirely unprecedented among his forebears. The BRI not only changes these people's lives, but also provides new opportunities for countless others across the world. In Italy, the BRI presents great opportunities for the port of Genoa. Io sono stato eh, sono cresciuto con, con la Fosco, quindi è stato una, un processo di crescita eh, che abbiamo portato avanti insieme. In Serbia. The BRI helps a century-old steel mill reverse years of losses. Zamislite, za samo pet i pogodnje od fabrike koja je na koliko nedelja ili možda i meseci, nije toliko važno, delilo od zaustavljanja i potpune obustave rada, postaćemo jedna od najboljih fabrika u ovom delu Evrope. In Senegal, a well drilling project under the BRI serves one seventh of the country's population. Vraiment, c'est des forages de bonheur parce qu'auparavant ça a été difficile. Des sincères remerciements au peuple chinois plus particulièrement qui nous ont, qui nous, qui nous sait, qui nous sait vraiment faire ce bonheur là. Voilà, on remercie vraiment l'initiative Centure et la Route. In Argentina, the BRI contributes to energy development of the southern South American country. Una vez finalizada la obra, la generación de energía que puede llegar a alcanzar es de 4,95 mil millones de kilovatios horas. En Irak, the BRI helps solve the problem of urban sewage treatment. أصبحت مشكلة المياه الثقيلة شيء من الماضي وستحسن مسقط رأسي ويكون بشكل أفضل. In Belarus, the BRI brings a modern industrial park. En el futuro también planeamos desarrollar научные разработки, уделять больше внимания инновациям, достигая всеми силами поставленной цели – это преобразование индустриального парка в современный международный промышленный эко-город. In Pakistan, the BRI gives rise to an urban metro line that carries Sinopak friendship. My family is very proud of me because uh, being a part of this much great project, this international project, everyone likes it. Over the past 10 years, the BRI has followed the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits. 
It has been welcomed by the international community as both a public good and a cooperation platform. Taking a high standard, people centered, and sustainable approach, the BRI is expected to further cement connectivity, inject growing impetus into global cooperation, and promote win win development and shared prosperity.